Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today's video features the stamp set from Hero Arts. This is called Time for Cake and it's adorable. It's a, just a really good neutral birthday set um, that also has matching dyes. One of the things that we talked about on my channel was videos that you guys would like to see and one of the requests time and time again was talking about scene cards. So here we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about scene cards. Um, I wrote down like these three pieces of paper, step one, step two, step three. So when you're stamping a scene card, which I'm just going to give you the heads up now, this video is going to be mostly instructional. There is another video which includes all of the coloring and everything like that, um, which will have a story time in it. But this is specifically for step by step how to do a scene card. So the first thing that I do is I lay out my stamps. I don't necessarily do it this way, but I was trying to give you a visual way of organizing your stamps so that you knew what you would stamp first, what you would stamp second, what you would stamp third. What you stamp first is the thing that's going to be up front. So whatever you want to see the most of is what you stamp first. So for me, in step one, I want this cupcake and this slice of cake to be in front of the other cakes. And this doesn't necessarily always, sometimes it's hard to figure out. So as I'm going through in my head what I want my scene to look like, um, and don't be afraid to stamp it out. I used to do that in the beginning all the time. I would stamp just right, I wouldn't even mask, I would stamp right on top of each other just with something simple that was easy to clean up like distressed inks so that I could see what I needed to stamp first. So what I need to stamp first is anything that I wanna see all of. So for me, that's the signs in the background and then these cupcakes and this cake in the front. I'm trying to lay it all out here. I need to stamp the candles before I can stamp the cake. And then I need to stamp the happy birthday sign before I can stamp that cake. So that's how I'm kind of picking them out. Here I'm just putting them all together so that I can visually see how it's going to look all on the card. Um, but if you if you can do this portion without having to, you know, lay them all out for step one, two, and three, that's fine. But everybody starts at different stages. Everybody um, is at different levels or different levels of comfort with one layer card. And this may very well be your first one. And that's fine. Then lay them all out. Um, and once you know what you need to stamp, then go ahead and section them off by, I stamp this first, stamp this second, stamp this third. Here, I'm gonna start stamping. <laughs> I'm gonna start stamping. Um, and then I used to do it this way. And this may work for you. I used to stamp my first layer and then I would stamp my masks and I would trim them out. Now there's two, three, types of masking paper that I typically use. Um, I love the Eclipse masking paper that comes on a large roll uh, and that one is wonderful. I've never had any um, issues with that one. It holds down well when I want to do uh, ink blending over it. Um, then I also use the post-it note tape on a roll like the two inch one. Here just something of note. I am using Hero Arts Intense Black Ink. It's because it's Copic safe and I'm going to be coloring with alcohol markers. So um, if you are also coloring with alcohol markers, just make sure you're using an ink that will work for that. I also think I ended up stamping them twice because my ink pad was a little bit dry. <laughs> um, I had just purchased a new one, but it was actually in my backpack out in my car because I had taken it to work with me. So I was kind of making do with the old one. But anywho, neither here nor there. Um, so in, I used to do it this way where I would stamp them and then I would stamp my masks. I would trim them out and I would mask them. I have since found that I much prefer what you're going to see me do next, which is stamping all of my masks at one time. Now you don't necessarily always know this is that eclipse masking paper I was talking about that just comes on this giant roll. Um, and this one is my, by far my go-to, like I use this more than anything else. Um, so I stamp them all now. And again, sometimes you're seeing kind of changes or morphs as you're working on it, which is fine. You can, um, cut more masks as you need them. 
But the reason that I like doing that is because instead of having to lay out all of my stamps on top of them, like on top of each other, or having to stamp all of them with Distress Ink, which both of these things work, they do, um, I can cut out my masks and then place my masks how I want them to be so that I can see them. And it's not like I'm not going to need the masks for the card. So it's not like I'm wasting anything. Sometimes, this does happen, that my very last, my third layer doesn't actually need a mask because I'm not doing any ink blending or anything on top of it. So sometimes that mask might be, I guess, a little bit of a waste. Um, but because it just helps me to see where things need to go and how I need to um, stamp them or line them up, um, I just prefer to just go ahead and stamp all the masks. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to move that out. And then here I'm going to put my masking paper back in and then I'm just going to start lining them up. Now you'll see I am going to stamp another cupcake. Um, I just think I ended up stamping two because there was two in the, I added two more. And then I also stamped the candles. Now you might think to yourself, why would you need to mask these candles? Well, I need to mask the candles so that the back line of the cake isn't showing through the candles and the candles look like they're on the cake instead of the cake is through the candles. I hope that makes sense. It's sometimes it's a little bit um, difficult to explain one layer cards and exactly the different levels or, or what you mean. Uh, if you have specific questions, by all means, if you follow my channel, you know that I'm I am the person who answers the questions. I am the person who reads all the comments. So if you have a specific question, please leave it below, and I will uh, answer your question as. Um, soon as I can. So anyway, I ended up stamping, I think like five candle masks, but I didn't even use all five. I used three. Like I said, things change and they morph and, and it's no, it's no big deal. But I just wanted you to be able to kind of see the whole process. One layer cards are by nature a little bit more time consuming and not everybody wants to do them, but I find that they're much easier to mail if you are a person who mails them which straight up I'm not. <laughs> um, but I also just like the way they look. I like how it goes from a blank piece of paper to this whole scene. And it's just like a little bit of magic. So here you can see now that I have all my masks cut, I am able to kind of lay everything out so I can see what I need to do. Um, and I'm kind of playing around back and forth with this cupcake. Ultimately, I decided to just stamp another one because I felt like I had this blank spot. Um, the happy birthday sign I did not originally cut a mask for, and I should have. So here, I'm just trying to get my uh, candles where I need them to be because they're the next thing that I'm going to stamp. And then um, I'm also going to stamp my happy birthday sign because this has the two, don't mind my head, um, this has the two posts that go into the cake, which again, I need to make sure that the sign is what you see the most of and not the cake because if I have the cake going through the back of the sign, it's going to be illegible. So here's what we already stamped. Um, I'm going to put those uh, masks back on to the pieces I've already stamped. I've moved all the stamp or the masks over so I could get everything lined up. And then once I've picked up my stamps, I'm going to go ahead and remove the masks that I don't need. This can get a little bit um, tedious, like the back and the forth and the moving the masks. Um, but it's really just, I guess, has become such a part of my process that I don't even necessarily notice it anymore. Um, but it's just, it's such a good tool to see. I mean, you can see exactly how your card is going to come out. And that's pretty priceless. Um, so yeah, that's that. As far as masking like those little teeny tiny pieces like the candles, I didn't have any issues trimming them out. And I did have a little bit of like issues getting them lined up, like sticking them down which can be a thing if you have a really thin 
mask or a very detailed mask. Here, like I told you, I forgot to stamp out the happy birthday mask, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Something to note um, when you are fussy cutting masks or anything else, really. Don't be afraid to take off the parts you don't need. So here, this has two little, like the happy birthday is a candle. It has two little wicks at the top, but I don't need that part to be masked off. So I'm not even going to fuss with trying to trim out the little teeny tiny parts. I'm just going to cut them off. The part that I need masked off is really the bottom section of the sign. Uh, back to applying the small masks. So sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if you're applying a super small mask or if you have a super intricate mask. In those cases, a pokey tool or a um, end of a paintbrush or something like that can kind of help you scooch them over into position if uh, you can't do it with your fingers. Um, usually I can use my nails to get it over, uh, but it just depends. If I have on dark nail polish, that's a risk in and of itself because um, if you rub the, your nail across the cardstock, it'll leave like a streak of color. Uh, that has happened to me on multiple occasions. Um, but anywho, the other thing you want to pay attention to is your placement of things. So I knew, <laughs> I made the conscious choice when I was stamping these candles. I knew that the candle was going to be too close to the edge of the cake. But I didn't want them to be so wildly disproportionate for their height that I made the conscious choice to go ahead and do it anyway, knowing that I would be able to fix it with the coloring. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're going to have boo-boos. Sometimes you're going to have errors. There's pretty much an error on every single one of my cards because I'm not Jesus and I'm not perfect. Um, so don't be afraid of the mistakes. There's usually ways to fix them, tricks to fix them. And you don't have to start all over with all this, like just pitch all of this stamping and masking that you've already done. Uh, if you watch my channel normally, you know that I, that's, I practice what I preach. I don't throw, I don't start over and I don't throw anything away. I find a way to fix it. Um, there are some things, if it's super early in the stamping, like it's the first or second thing I've stamped and it's totally jacked, um, then I will let it go because I'm old, I'm not in, super invested in it yet. But like at this point in this card, I am very invested. Uh, I'm not starting over. So one of the other things to pay attention to when you're lining up all of your things is whatever you see the most of has to be the closest to the bottom of your card. Because if... So like this cake I'm putting down now, if this cake was scooted down and it was in front of this cupcake, the cupcake would then look like it was floating in the middle of the cake, which cannot be a thing. So in order to make sure it is set back, that cake has to be higher than the cupcake. So the most important horizon line that you're looking at with a scene card is the bottom edge of all of your images because there has to be enough of a difference that one looks like it's behind the other. Also with these little, the little pieces, sometimes the masks, because there's such a little area sticking it to the paper, Sometimes they can pull off, and especially if you are putting other masks on top of them, always double check to make sure your mask stayed in place, because I have pulled them off inadvertently in the past and uh, colored something I didn't want to color, and it just is what it is. But so see here, now like this cupcake I'm stamping in the middle, this cupcake is behind the other cake, behind the slice of cake, like it will look like it's behind because it is up higher than both of those images. So here, pretty much all of the stamping and masking is complete. Um, the only thing, this is my favorite part, is the removing of the mask because then that's where the magic, like you see how it all comes together. 
Um, the only other thing that I'm going to do, which again, you don't have to, but because I want that full scene look, um, and here I have on dark nail polish, so I'm using my little pokey tool to, to pick up my mask so I don't get my nail polish on my card. Um, I am going to frame my little signs in just to drive home that scene look as if there's like these little signs or little banners that are hanging on the wall of this birthday party. <sighs> this is my super professional ruler. I'm messing with you. My child actually broke my clear T-square ruler, which will be linked below along with everything else that I've used. Um, and I had not purchased another one. Now I have since then. It arrived two days ago. Um, but I needed something clear and that had a straight edge that I would be able to see my signs through to make sure that I wasn't getting too close to the other signs. So I just used a clear piece of acetate. Um, and I'm also using my grid mat in the background to just make sure everything is lined up and good to go. No matter how many times I do this, no matter how many signs I've made, I always do it in pencil first. I have never been uh, so presumptuous as to think that it was a good idea for me to go in there with a marker um, or a pen right out the gate. Now, if you are substantially more confident in me, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, if you're committed, you're committed, and that's totally fine. But I like to very much, like, with cutting out all of my masks, yes, it's a little bit more work, but then I know for sure what it's going to look like before I go ahead and commit to it permanently. So now that all the um, pencil is done, like here, I felt like um, my sign was a little bit too long. My little hooray sign, it was a little bit too long and it wasn't balanced with the top. So I just went in, drew another pencil line, erased my first pencil line, and we were good to go. Something to note here, I am using a um, alcohol safe pen to do my outlining because I am going to be coloring, like I said, with alcohol markers, Copic markers. Um, so I want to make sure that doesn't smear. These particular ones are discontinued. So if you're looking for them, you're not going to be able to find them. I would recommend instead a Micron or Copic multi-liner those are extremely comparable to the ones that I'm using here. So I'm just going to go through, finish up those lines, make sure everything is matchy-matchy, and then that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, this video is just the steps on how to create the one layer scene. Um, the other video, which will have the coloring, it'll have a little bit of this too. Uh, it's just sped up and kind of cut down. Um, but then it will also have, you know, our typical story time and things like that. But again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will hope to see you on the next video for the coloring.